Welcome, everyone. Mr. Mack, would you uh, mind sitting down, please, sir? Thank you. Appreciate it. Welcome, everyone, to the regular council meeting, Monday, October 5th, 2015, at 7 p.m. So we now we'll have a call to order, please. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambach. Present. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Craybar. Yo. Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. All present. Thank you. Appreciate that. Again, welcome everyone. A little housekeeping. If you have a cell phone, would you mind putting it on vibrate or turn it off, please, so it doesn't interrupt the, the meeting. We appreciate it. We'll now have the invocation by Pastor Jeff Christmas from the First Baptist Church of Nicola. Please stand, please. Would you please bow your heads with me in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight thanking you for an opportunity once again to gather about the business of our city. We thank you for our leaders, Father, and particularly as we think of the successful weekend that we just experienced, how grateful we are for those who would sacrifice their time and effort to do what they did for us as a city. And so we, we express our gratitude for those who lead us. Now, Father, as we come to this time, we pray your wisdom and guidance as this business is conducted, for we ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Pastor Christmas, we really thank you for every all your help also. Very little. For taking care of you. Thank you. Okay, we'll now say the pledge, please. At the back of the room, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Now, if I have, may have action on the minutes of regular meeting, September 21st, so 2015. Second. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> Who was the second again? Mr. McIntyre. There is one correction on the minutes. If I would note that uh, motion to adjourn was made by Councilmember Reynolds, not Councilmember Zambach. Mm -hmm. You know, I have so noted that initial that on the minutes. Thank you. Any questions? Anyone? <coughs> Comments? If you would please call for the vote. Mr. Zambach? I abstain. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Kirk Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Pass 6-0 to 1. Thank you. Okay, communications. We now have a communication for Peyton. Peyton. Peyton Musgrove, she's 7 from the Mac Miss Great Plains Princess. If you would come up here, please, and look into the camera and tell us what you are going to be doing, please. Come on up a little farther, if you would. Right here. Yeah. That way we can hear you. There are microphones up here. Okay, we got it right here. Um, she, then she does an introduction where it's a 20 second kind of about herself, what she wants to do when she grows 
with up, where she's from, and then finally she sits down one-on-one -on -one with each of the judges, and they get 60 seconds to ask, ask her age-appropriate questions. So, favorite color, um, what she wants to be when she grows up, last year at Nationals, they said, if we came to your town, where would you take me? Who knows? <laughs> What was the answer? Yeah. She would take them to the Air Force Museum to see the airplane from all the world. Oh, that's so, good. So they don't know. <laughs> so she wanted to do her introduction for you guys. Anything boys can do, girls can do better. That's why when I grow up, I want to be a firefighter just like my daddy. But since I'm only seven, I will continue to terrorize my twin little brothers and be a Girl Scout. I'm all about the cookies. From New Carlisle, Ohio, I am Pete and Muskrat. Thank you, Pete. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Good luck. All the best. Okay, uh, communications, we have another. I would ask for all the uh, Heritage of Flight Committee members to come up, please, and get up in this area, if you would, please. I have to change. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't take that one off, please. We don't need to do that. Do what? I don't care. Oh, man, are you kidding me? Come on, Gene. Gene, you got to do it? Sure. April has one. April has one. She's still aware. Bill, can you sign a waiver of liability for me? Please. I have a thought. Yeah, I'm going to sign a waiver of liability for me. Please. I'm going to sign a waiver of liability for me. I'm going to sign a waiver of liability for me. I'm going to sign a waiver of liability for me.
such. Lunch in a couple of weeks on my own personal appreciation. He did not have to do that, but he definitely appreciates what all goes into doing such that unique event. So uh, when you see a minute, just give Bruce. And that's what it's about: is the community Absolutely. coming together. That was a nice event. That could have been, did you mention how much it would have been otherwise? It would have been one hundred and thirty-six dollars. Wow. So that was also nice. And he's involved also in the festival. Yeah, Bruce. Again, let's give everybody a hand again, please. So one, quite one thing I'd like to bring out also, most people don't know, fundraising is all done by the committee. It takes almost $19,000 to put this festival, so try and raise money is getting tougher and tougher to say the so Anybody that would like to donate the next year, they would more than welcome it. So actually, the website you can go on, you the website, you can actually donate money. I don't know for sure if it, it is tax Chuck, there wouldn't anything be getting accomplished. That's about it. Yeah, we can worry about it. Yeah, either one of these. Oh, yeah. 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 Stages. 
Amen. Too many ladders. That's right. <laughs> Marshall, no, I need to say something about the parade. Uh, uh, this, this, is my, this is my first year of coordinating the parade, and uh, it was very interesting. When did, when did the balls that fall? I wanted to thank uh, Sharon Honeycutt, who's not here tonight, who's part of the committee who helped me with the parade. Uh, I thank my son, Andrew Collier, who was the person who uh, dealt with all the people. up front and uh, Bruce Lennon who uh, helped with anything was needed while the parade was going off. It went off rather smooth and I appreciate everybody who participated in the community and, and special thanks to the flying angels. I'd like to say thanks to Todd and Leroy who made sure we had 12 airplanes when we thought probably we weren't going to have any. So it was a wonderful one. Uh, real quick, I'll just won't drag this out too much longer. But it's amazing when you're on a committee this long, it does something so neat with that. It's like it's our own little separate family. I mean, we fight, <laughs> we uh, agree with each other at times, but you know we all know that the, the main goal is here, and we, we look past that. Everyone on this committee is just a great people. City Manager's report, if you would. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Just a few uh, items I'd like to discuss in the City Manager's report for, uh, for this council meeting. Uh, one is the one free to be not transferred to the city yet, so we have various problems to complete their end. Um, last I spoke to Mr. Bill Huffman, I believe they're in the Clark County Sheriff's Office, waiting for the police to review those. I still personally have a few questions I need to get answered up. As soon as we have these in 
our possession and the questions I have uh, or answer, I will have to report to the council if possible. Um, <coughs> under the fire discussion, the job post for the fire administrator chief job was uh, at Rand, and at Rand for three days in the Springfield News Sun, Dayton Daily News. It will also be on monster.com for 14 days. The deadline to apply for that job is October 9th of this year. Call said the ad was $565. Um, I did utilize an offer from the Springfield Chamber that did reduce the cost down to $282.50. Um, as a result, we've had seven applications, but I can give an update on that. I just before I left for So we do have 12 applications. I have had a few phone calls, so I'm expecting this to be more before that October 9th deadline. Once that deadline has come, um, I'll gather all the applications. How we said to do the board will be a very community-oriented, uh, transparent process when we go to the interview. And we'll hopefully have a new fire administrator chap, uh, slash chief here relatively soon. Randy, is this actually Yes. Yep. He will do evidence in the... Uh, so we have... Let me explain this to you real quick. You see this front page right here? And then if you look on the back side, it has the full description. Well, on monster.com, it has this blurb right here, the short one, but it also has the full length job description with it as well. If we were going to run the job description in print, it would have been thousands of dollars. So, uh, usually the internet is the way to go nowadays to apply for jobs, so I kind of like how that worked out. Um, so, we'll have to look at the camera in full morning depth after the night. I, I do have one question, if I may. You had just inferred that it's going to be an open situation as far as actually vetting people that are applying for the job. Do you have in your mind on how you're going to handle that? Uh, probably something similar to what we're doing with Gallup. We'll have community members come up, those of who have been invited in for the interview process will be selected to come in. It'll be a community-oriented um, interview process. If people want to ask them questions, it's great. A lot of small municipalities does this. Yellow Springs has had it with their assistant city manager um, application process for the very open and public form. Um, I think given the circumstances that we have with our fire department, I think transparency and letting everybody have their um, two cents put in is probably the best way for us to go. So you're looking at an open forum possibly here so sure. people can ask questions and so forth. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Just wanted to get that out. Uh, moving on to the police discussion, I want to give a big thanks to Sheriff Dean Kelly and Clark County Sheriff's Office for stepping up patrol and visibility over the Heritage Flight Weekend. I was out for a little bit, walking around, I was to see an increased police presence. So again, I just want to give him a, a, a big thank you for that. I'll be shooting him an email here in the next couple of days uh, saying that I did notice the uh, extra patrol out. Um, again, you know, uh, community policing was a big effort, my, my big effort too, so we see that, we see the visibility. So again, hats off to the sheriff for that over this big weekend that we have here in our town. Uh, informational items. We have a grant, and I put this on the city website. So if any of you, any of you who would love to volunteer October 17th, which is a Saturday, we're going to be going around the town to make some flower beds and plant bowls. Uh, we got a grant from uh, Keith Clark County Beautiful of $250 to put some bowls on the ground. So um, again, we'll be meeting at the city building at 9 a.m. on October 17th. Right now we're going to park at all the new Carlisle signs. So when our guests or our residents or visitors are coming to town, they have that nice welcome new Carlisle sign with some nice green flowers. Looking forward to that, but we definitely need some volunteers. So again, October 17th at 9 a.m. you can meet at the city building if you would like to uh, help out the community and beautify the building. It is Saturday. Randy? Yes, sir. Uh, do we have to bring your own shovel? Uh, we're not going to need too many tools. Um, if you could bring some tools, that'd be great. But what we're going to be doing is um, just planting balls. So it's a ball extractor that we're going to do. Uh, Kathy Morgan, the one who showed book, is really taking this project um, under her um, So um, as, as she tells us, we're not going to need too much, but we're going to need some balls. Um, ball and stickers. I'm not a flower person. I don't know if ball. It's all good. It goes into the ground and puts a ball in it. So anything that you need to materialize, I'll personally go on and buy. All that stuff.
stuff up here for having any with the Sledgehammer will go very well with that bulb thing you're talking about. Yes, to get it in the ground. Get it down in the ground. Yeah. Absolutely. As hard as the ground. Mr. Mayor, I think we've got a call out from my city manager. All right, any questions for the city manager? Council? Anyone? Yes, sir. Is the bridge still private? I got another email. Uh, 16. Yeah, I got an email from uh, the park on <laughs> Any other questions? Anyone from the city mic? Or anyone up there at this point? Anyone? Up there? We will head on. Uh, if you would go ahead, sir, with the ordinances. We have resolutions or not, so we'll go ahead with you. I'm sorry. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. I messed up again. Sometimes I do that. Uh, it's now time for uh, comments from members of the public. Does anyone like to speak to me? You go up to the podium, please. Identify yourself. I know, but that is so we can hear you. My name is Nancy Levinovich, 505 Pees Drive. And I just uh, was wondering if you could tell us whether or not we had any in-house applicants for the fire chief position? We have not had any in-house applications for the fire chief position. All right, thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Crump, can you go up, please? <clears throat> yeah. Bill Cook, 302 Zimmerman. A couple things. I found out today that the Board of Elections is moving the polling place from the elementary school over to Tecumseh High School, <coughs> which means that everyone that votes in the city is going to have to go to Tecumseh High School. Was there any input into the city or any action by Board of Elections to ask any city officials about this? I, I have not heard anything at all about this bill. I'm sorry to hear that, to be honest with you. Yeah. That is a definite thing. I found that out today. It was on their website. And it's yeah, it's it's on their website. The polling place has been changed. Did they say why? Uh, when I talked to the board of elections, they said that it was for security purposes. They didn't want people coming in and out, strangers going out of school with elementary. So with all the shootings and things, so it makes sense, they think, to move it to a high school where doors you can go in and out as they please. So, but didn't have anything to do with the shortage of workers or anything like that. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. No, no, no. I, mean, I was told that it was all about the security and they had some teachers and some principals and the former superintendent say it should be moved somewhere yeah. safer. Didn't you have that same conversation last year? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I know they didn't like the idea of the yeah, right. grade school because of right. The security of the doors and going in and out, not being able to do anything with that. Yeah. I am super surprised that they moved it that far away from the city. Yeah. I, I was told today when I stopped over and talked to the guy that the elementary school, when they told me the kids weren't going to move to the middle. Well, again, it's a, it's a security situation. I heard that from, I, I would think one of our churches or something here could hold that again. I mean, is there a rack? I would ask that you would contact the Board of Elections and ask why we don't have another facility in the city of New Palau for our voters to actually utilize something in the city because I, I think that's ridiculous that somebody would have to drive out of the city to vote on city issues. I know there's a couple that are county. You know, if there's down to it, you have to choose a shelter house. Well, again, they probably saw this 454 the zip code of the city of even though they just have a spring code. So that happens that, widely. Well, could you call them? Yeah, I'll, I'll find out. Would you call and check on that, see if there's any alternatives before they really solidify that? And since 
because they will send things out there on the voters at that point, right, Bill? Well, I think the just three and a half miles. Probably get two or three. Yeah, if you don't drive. Just out of cur courtesy to the city officials, I think that you know this is the least the board of elections could have done would have been notified the city and ask for an input before this. I, I agree place. with you totally. This is the first I've heard that. Well. Second factor, got a couple of calls from neighbors regarding <coughs> DPNL. And I got into it. I found out that DPNL has been sending letters around the fact that they wanted people to change their suppliers for the electric power so DPNL was able to do the billing. After checking the situation out, I got into the aggra aggravation program, I guess is the word I want to use, for Bethel Township. I did a spreadsheet of what the costs were last year compared to what I paid, just at my residence alone. I found out I could have saved 370 some dollars by going with the Bethel Township plan. Now I think one of the things that possibly we as a city might be able to do would be to invite those people from the aggravation in here for a meeting with the citizens, invite the citizens to bring their bills and have a general, I guess the word is session, over the possibility of their saving money. I think this might also help us as far as a payback for them passing the income tax. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your input. Anyone else like to speak this evening? Yes, sir. Dale Grimm, 114 South Main Street. Many of you know me. I'm the publisher of the New Kalau News. And I have addressed this council before on our fact-finding. Our newspaper present for events. Our stories are based on facts. And the way we get that is by requesting information from governmental bodies. We do that through public records requests. When we issue a public records request, the governmental body is required to respond within a reasonable amount of time. We have been waiting a month and a half, two months, for some requests. And I don't think one could consider a month and a half, two months, a reasonable request for a handful of documents that should be on the time readily available to someone. I like to have a good relationship with the city, but I don't want to have to get nasty, but we have a job to do, and we have to get it done, and we need this information to get it done. I would appreciate your help in Thank you. Thank you, sir. Trevor, to Mr. Grimm's uh, comment, that is in our law director's office. Anyone else, please? I'm here to say the same. Okay, shall continue on. Uh, committee reports, are there any committee reports? Let us see. Resolutions are done. Ordinances, if you go ahead, please. The motion dies for no one responding. So if we go over the next one, please. Would you like to read the other business, please? Yes. The, the, the open door session, which is happening every second Tuesday of each month at 3 p.m. in the city building, meet face to face with a representative from the Congressman John Maynard's office, and uh, at some point in time that will change the work of the leaders or whoever in the Congressman is for this area. Public meeting, October the 8th, 
subject matter is the Van Crest debut redevelopment. Most, some of you have uh, talked about this in the last council. We're in the process of doing the major uh, redevelopment that we there. So we're saying that we'll be approving uh, or disapproving the site plan in that season. If I'm correct, I'm October 8th, is this Thursday? Okay, this Thursday at 3 30 p.m. here at the Smith Park Powerhouse. Family movie night, Smith Park, Saturday, October 10th. Business, anyone? Council, you have anything at all? Anybody else? Anything? Audience, anything? Any other business you'd like to bring forward? Okay. Anyone in staff? Right. And we will go forward. There is an executive session tonight to consider the probationary appointment and continued employment of the city manager. Uh, there will be no business done after the executive session. So we're going to take about a five minute break and we need to clear the room so we can go into executive session. <coughs> if we you would please and thank you all for being here. Need a motion. Need a motion. Please, I beg your pardon. Second. Mr. Zambog, Mr. McIntyre. Second by Mr. McIntyre. Yes, sir. Mr. Zambog, Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rickbauer. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Again, thank you all for being here this evening. And again, no business will be done after the executive.